Welcome everybody to the world of filament making. So this is Lyman Filament Extruder version 6. This is a construction manual by Hugh Lyman, the so-called inventor. There are no inventors, there's people who only who innovate, yeah. by the way. This is the extruder, how it looks. So, so essentially it's a, it's a plastic enclosure. There's a, the hopper full, filled with pellets. So you, whatever you're, you're turning into filament, the plastic filament comes down through this hopper here and goes into this heating element. The heating element is like this. Yeah. This is a, a PID temperature controller which gets feedback from a thermistor inside the heat barrel. That's a heat element in a heat barrel, which is simply a half inch pipe. Okay. And then it, uh, the only controls are how fast you're spinning the motor. The motor is right in the back here. Mm -hmm. uh, that's set through a knob, I believe. And the feedback comes from the nozzle, which is actually surrounded in welding, bla surrounded in carbon fiber welding blanket to keep the heat in, mm -hmm. where it melts. That's the trick, yeah, yeah, just to make it more efficient. I mean, I think it would probably work without it. Yeah. But the idea is that there the um, the barrel is kept at a constant temperature. So either by setting the temperature, or by both the combination of set temperature and the speed of the motor, mm -hmm. you're getting this filament that's that's coming out the nozzle. And here here has two configuration. One is one is hung on a wall, the second one is just horizontal. So yeah. we're going to build the one that's hanging on a wall. I talked to him, he said the wall one is the one that he's using, it works better. So it's, we start with a bunch of 3D printed parts. So like with a little 3D printer that we built ourselves, we can print all these in one piece. Now, what I did is I printed them in multiple pieces because uh, I was actually using the Lulzbot Mini mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to do that as we're upgrading all our D3Ds. Okay, so, so right. basically the, so this is, uh, when you print it out of pieces, what you got to do is glue them together. Uh, that's the thing, mm -hmm. and that's what that's what's happening here. And these are printed out of four sections. This would be around. Uh, it's probably more than 12 inches across. That's why everyone prints it in pieces. But once again, once once we scale our printers, we'll be printing that in one piece. So this is the like this square here. Uh, that's that square structure, squarish with the rounded corners, um, and that's what happens. Here, there's the power supply, 24 volt power supply. There's a gear motor. The power supply would be for the the gear motor, the con temperature controller would be. Where's the temperature controller? I guess it's. In, I don't know how it's shown there. Oh yeah, it's it's facing the other way. Yeah. So the the screen is on the other side. Um, power supply to the to the motor. Temperature controller activates. Solid, a st solid state relay that turns the the heat barrel on and off the heating element inside the barrel and the motor drives a simple auger bit it's a it's a 9 16 auger bit mm -hmm. is what I, i've got both 9 16 and 5 8 5 8 i believe is too big for a half inch pipe so i think the 9 16 is the correct one there's a heat band and a switch for for the heater yeah. so Moving on, here. what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through this whole manual real quick so everybody gets an appreciation for what's what we all know about this so far. And by the way, we've uh, open sourced this fully. I, I mean, it's open source, but what we did was we we created, uh, if you go to Lyman Filament Extruder on the OSC Wiki, you'll see the full CAD in FreeCAD, people. So this is what we have right now. You can download the full CAD files in open format so you can play with this these are the actual files of the heat of the heat barrel and the extruder part and the other part is the winder part so moving on to the PDF here construction manual here so going through uh, basically you're gluing up the parts since this is in multiple parts you're holding them together and you're gluing, gluing that with glue epoxy uh, crazy glue I'm, we're gonna try crazy glue since that's fast acting and it can be pretty effective so we'll lay it up uh, just like we're shown here and we're gonna basically try to replicate this this is we've got all the components mm -hmm. and here minus the wiring I, I haven't studied the wiring in great detail but maybe as we go through this we can we can actually see what's going on a lot of this will be obvious like turn a switch on and off mm -hmm. other things like the PID there's a little instruction manual inside the box we're gonna read that and see which which connections are which uh, so here's the gluing so um, main things motor auger heater okay so let's t take a look at 
the heat barrel. This heat barrel is put onto one end of this, of this, so this is the hopper here actually. The heat barrel goes on this side here through this four flange. It's a metal flange. And how do you, what do you do to the flange? That flange is actually custom drilled using this template that's 3D printed. So when you, so we're going to drill that through to mount it on a small MDF block, which I guess is an, it's an insulator. Uh, to keep the plastic from melting because the barrel is going to be hot. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use the MDF to, to keep everything cool so we don't melt. Um, 5 8 drill bit. Here I drill it out. Look at that. We are using a, well, let's see, I'm not sure if we're using 916s because I haven't read the instructions. But uh, we're, we can drill out the pipe uh, and ream it out as much as we need to. We put in a little bushing into the MDF block the bit is going to be spinning inside that brass bushing so here's how we assemble we basically screw in this half inch pipe into this this half inch flange and then on the other end we have a one half inch pipe uh, MPT pipe coupler and then we've got so we've got um, let's see his is 0 0.60 diameter that sounds to me like just about somewhere like nine sixteenths maybe mm -hmm. okay so here's how so here's that once again that hopper in more detail the auger bit has a hex shank you put a bunch of washers and a thrust washer on it and you couple it to the motor here's the the barrel side the heat side no problem I could see this we can snap this out in a second that's obvious uh, I do see a little hole in there which might be an air hole I we have to look at that into more in more detail insert the shaft through, you couple with a 3D printed coupler, you couple to this this very strong motor. Now this motor is very very strong um, so we're hoping that our coupler, which I printed by the way at 100%, typically you do 20% for light duty stuff mm -hmm. but since that's gonna carry all the force mm -hmm. uh, we want to make sure that that's pretty tight and this is gonna be the key perhaps then one of the critical challenges here because the hex shank goes in here that's good as far as the motor there's a keyway in there so we're gonna make sure that we have to set the shafts and basically couple them to each other as strongly as possible and if that fails we can go to other means such as uh, I mean we've used like rubber uh, very solid rubber couplers other things but we'll see what I mean hopefully this this part right here works for us so that's the assembly full assembly with the the motor the barrel uh, barrel heat barrel at the end, and then the auger here, where the your chips of ABS plastic fall in. Thermistor now, so so attach a temperature feedback system, just like we did with the 3D printer. Mm -hmm. It's a little different type of a thermistor, but we use this Kapton tape, like we have. So, and then the other trick is we have to drill out this, this cap. It's a half inch brass cap, brass plug, that we drill out. I would imagine about a two two millimeter drill bit. Uh, I know Hugh told me he does 1.25 millimeters for the 1.75 filament making. So for for this three inch, uh, three millimeter filament, we're going to probably start with a two inch, dr two, two millimeter drill bit to make it happen. Mm -hmm. So here you've got the thermistor, you've got the heat band around that now. Uh, you've got the fan, and that's how it goes. And it's wrapped around with a heat blanket. He also uses a fan here to cool cool the filament off as it's falling uh, and in this case here that, that that fan holder is used just as a guide hole I guess mm -hmm. I'm not sure so in our case we've got this cup this uh, this hopper element where we uh, we put it onto the top of the the box you got some screws here you attach all that together to the bottom part which is the, the electronics part and here's spitting out some filament so so if all goes well in a few hours we will have this happening which would be very cool. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, and now next to the next is the filament winder side which here shows the spool so that's once again a 3D printed spool it's driven by a little friction wheel against the rim and this rubber band here that's not a drive that's just a hold down to keep that uh, keep the spool from falling out. Uh, there's a speed controller on this little DC motor drive in the spool and there's a speed controller on another element which which is the wire feeder uh, uh, what do you call it? tensioner uh, tension roller which keeps the wire at a particular tension as the 
as the spool rolls it up. So, so there has to be a tight relationship between the speed of this motor here and the speed of this other motor. I guess they got to be exactly right so that when you're pulling, uh, I think I think that's the way it works. I'm not sure. Uh, as it's pulling, it's they're both spinning at the same rate, which is actually when you think about it, that's impossible. So there must be some maybe like this. I, I'm speculating here, but I'm speculating that this roll here pulls slightly faster than this roll here. So if there's any slack, slack does not build up. So this must spin just a little faster is just my guess. Yeah. Now what is this element here? It's just a simple on off switch. It's got two limit switches which have uh, long long fingers on them. So if the so basically it's a, simple, a very simple on off mechanism. When this thing, when the the spooler here stops the filament here as it's being generated it falls down through this little guide hole the elongated guide hole and then it trips this lever which turns on this DPDT switch double pole double throw switch which turns on both the spooler and the tensioner mechanism mm -hmm. so once it so it spools it and then after it so it's a little faster than the actual generation of the filament so once it spools it enough the the filament tends to rise up in the hole as it's getting pulled and it trips another switch which then deactivates the the spooler mechanism so here's a detail of the tensioner it's a little 5 volt 12 volt 5 amp power supply to the uh, to your speed controller here and here's your spooler controller so I guess within a decent range because of this mechanism here we can we can uh, set the speeds accordingly where the faster you set the spooler, the more more times it will be going up and down. Uh, many more times it will be going up and down as opposed to if you wind very, very slowly, then it will, in principle, if you, if you were to get it exactly right, it would stay right in the middle all the time. But that's going to be impossible yeah. because there is no other feedback outside of on and off. Okay, so this is some CAD and some proprietary software that we don't know what it is. Uh, probably AutoCAD. Um, that's uh, so more details. I mean, top view here. So it's this is kind of transparent. But we did redid this completely within FreeCAD. So uh, this is, this one is interesting here. So this is what we're going to do. We have this neck that's angled so that you you have an entrance going vertically up. So we have this piece 3D printed, and we have this collar 3D printed. And I love it when a plan comes together. So here's uh, here's the couplers motor. So motor gets attached with four bolts. Mm -hmm. The coupler gets attached right to the shaft. There's probably a set screw there. Mm -hmm. uh, then we got the auger, and then uh, some more screws tightened down. I don't know what those screws are doing there. To tell you the truth, the auger goes in. The MDF block. Oh yeah. Okay. Those. Okay. Sorry. Those are the screws that go into the MDF block towards the outside to grab the the extruder barrel from the inside that's what it looks like and it's probably because the bolt heads want it to be on the inside since the bolt heads as opposed to the thread and not take up less space so they don't interfere as much because you'd, you'd question well why are you sticking the screws out to grab something from the inside well that's my only guess why that would happen so more screws to screw this down to the base the plastic base um, there's some more washers to keep things cool. Actually, these are, I think, MDF washers to keep the screws from pro propagating too much heat. Uh, nuts, the barrel, coupler, thermistor, blanket for insulation, heat band, plug. There you go. Cool. Um, next, so this is this is actually the piece, all the pieces that we have. These pieces I got in a, in a black bag right behind me here. Uh, all these we printed out. We've got these to, I would just suggest crazy glue, so we can do that. Uh, here's this detail, we have all these pieces. So so this this is the one that we're doing uh, mm -hmm. for the vertical position, mm -hmm. vertical hopper. And what is that? Shipping tube? Okay, so he's using actually a, a standard 3-inch shipping tube, which we have from our 8 millimeter rods. Oh, that's right. So yeah. there we go. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't have to buy that since we bought it for the the 3D printers for the 8mm rods. So this is how you basically glue this all together. It's a little jigsaw puzzle. Look at that. That's pretty nice. Maybe with the, the I guess, sheet metal workbench within FreeCAD could probably generate something like that, mm -hmm. you guys. 
uh, anyone in FreeCAD out there can tell us, give us feedback. So basically how you stick it together, all the parts, details of parts. Okay, now this is going to be the, that's good, this is good, we got some, uh, if we can follow this, we can pretty much do the whole electronics. Do you read any of these diagrams like this or not uh, really? A little bit, yeah. I mean, yeah, we could. we can probably, yeah, I mean, this is pretty transparent here, right. looks, looks pretty good, looks like, you know, we can probably make all these connections here without a problem. Uh, heat band, um, yeah, 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 looks looks pretty good. So this is going to be our main reference point as far as any things that are not transparent immediately from the way the things look, because what I'd explained just before is pretty pretty much transparent. Let's see, what is this? Is there a this is a configuration full speed for 15 R RPM and is not variable and the fan is on or off with the switch. And this configuration here is the the fan is on all the time and the motor RPM is variable. So in our case we have the variable motor RPM mm -hmm. because um, we have a variable voltage regulator by the uh, on the extruder side. And this is a, as far as I know that's we do have this variable voltage. We've got three of them total, one here and then two more for the uh, the winder side. So this is parts, parts list. Oh yeah, more details, this is pretty nice. Um, and that's it, that's it people. So that's all the documentation that there is. We'll generate some more documentation on the actual, uh, the spooler part, and we'll go from here. So we're building it, starting this tonight. Thank you.